What up, everyone? I am Gallant Havoc, and welcome back to Havoc's Horror Show. After Show. Yeah, let's go with After Show. Where we celebrate the spooky season, or in this case, later than the spooky season, because I can't stick to my guns, apparently. But here we are now. Figure, get this out of the way. Get her out there. Let's do it. And then, content can continue rolling out for all of a month, under a month, because 2024 is coming fast, and I got a lot of work to do to update the channel. But anyway, so this is going to be another mini review, just like separate ways, as this was the expansion for Resident Evil Village. Oh yeah, we're going back. Or rather, a portion of the expansion. Today we're going to be talking about Shadows of Rose, the sequel to the main story of the game. So let's jump into it. Fair warning, this mini-review will contain spoilers. Shadows of Rose tells the story of Rosemary Winters, Ethan Winters' daughter, who we rescue by the end of the main story. She has grown up harboring borderline superhuman powers thanks to her parents, Ethan and Mia, both having been infected by the mold we saw back in Resident Evil 7, and by extension, Village. And by the time the Shadows of Rose story comes along, she wants to be rid of said powers, which leads to our plot, delve into the psyche of the Megamycete to find a way to cure her. So that being said, Shadows of Rose really pushes into the realm of psychological horror that the series has been going into since 7. Playing as Rose is similar enough to playing as Ethan in the main story, with some changes. For example, it is played entirely in third person, which was a comfortable transition for fans of the older games, mainly 4 and on. But Rose can use her powers with what was the block button, using them to stun enemies and solve puzzles. And while it can feel kind of clunky at times, it wasn't all that bad. The really infuriating part, though, was how under-equipped you feel, even with your powers. Now I understand, that's kind of the point of a horror game, to feel helpless, but... Goddamn. But anyway, where the expansion really shines, is its subject matter. Like the main game, you go through several different types of horror. In one part, it's supernatural horror. In another, it's body horror. In another, goddamn motherfucking dolls. Complete with weeping angels. Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. They are fast. Faster than you can believe. Don't turn your back. Don't look away. And don't <laughs> blink. <laughs> and I thought the baby was bad. What the fuck is that? The cool thing about the doll segment, though, is how they reintroduce Evelyn, the main antagonist from Seven, which just made the winter story come full circle. Then the final boss comes around, and it's Mother Miranda again. Great. Sure, she has a few new tricks, but it just felt lazy to me. Although from a story standpoint, it does make sense. And with all that being said, this expansion is really short, which isn't a bad thing, but I would have liked to have seen them expand on it a bit further. Plus, as a Resident Evil lore head, I wish we could have learned more about what happened with Chris and Mia in the years since Rose is growing up. Just would have added more context to the story, if you ask me. But with all that being said, what did I think of Resident Evil Shadows of Rose? I liked it. It brought new and interesting ideas to the world of Resident Evil, even if it was very short and clunky. But the subject matter, like the goddamn dolls, were so good. And sure, one can argue that the expansion to Village was unnecessary, but... 
I'll give props to Capcom. They gave Resident Evil Village more life and longevity. And that is why I'm giving Shadows of Rose a gallant rating of 6 out of 10. I've got this! I am curious if a Resident Evil 9 will see more of Rose or go back to one of the other main characters that we know and love, Jill, Leon, Chris. Hopefully Jill. And maybe we'll see more of the psychological horror that we did in 7 and Village. But I personally would prefer them going back to the roots with some good old zombies and monsters. But we shall see what the future holds. Anyway folks, that's about all I got to say about this. Super short review, which, funny enough, matches up with the expansion. So emphasis on the mini this time around. But in the meantime folks, I'm Gallant Havoc. Wreak some havoc, and... I would have done Castlevania sooner. The, the series, the Netflix series, but uh, life uh, finds a way. So that being said, I'm going to push Castlevania till next year. Hopefully when season two of Nocturne comes out. Hopefully. And But I will continue putting out some reviews here and there. And inspired by, with Todd McFarlane. In the not too distant future. Soon soon. I kind of had to go back and readjust how I'm doing things, because I want to give it a fresh coat of paint. Get it? Because art. But anyway, wreak some havoc, and I'll see you in the next one.